Hello everybody, I hope you're doing well. It's been a little while. I had a pretty big gap between making videos, but now I'm back and hey, just in time for that Mario Kart 8 DLC. Wave 1 just dropped on Friday. And you know, there's a surprising amount of controversy with this DLC. I mean, there's controversy when Nintendo does anything lately, so it's not really surprising. But I'll admit that this DLC has gotten a little bit more backlash from people than I actually thought it would, for a multitude of reasons. Some of which we will touch on in this video, but let's just get right into it. So we got our Wave 1 of the DLC, which consisted of two cups, uh, four tracks in each, as per the usual with Mario Kart 8. We got the Golden Dash Cup and the Lucky Cat Cup. Our first eight tracks spread throughout these two cups are Paris Promenade, Toad Circuit, Chaco Mountain, Coconut Mall, Tokyo Blur, Shroom Ridge, Sky Garden, and Ninja Hideaway. These tracks come from a multitude of different Mario Kart games from all different generations. You got Mario Kart Wii in there, you got Mario Kart 64, a little bit of Super Circuit, and of course most recently Mario Kart Tour tracks are also featured in this DLC. Now Mario Kart Tour is the magic words, because as many people have noticed and many people have called out on Twitter and wherever everybody talks about Mario Kart, many of these tracks are literally just for Mario Kart Tour because many tracks have been redone in Tour, which brings us to our first controversy with the DLC, and that is that these are just Mario Kart Tour tracks upscaled and put into Mario Kart 8. And this is true. It's pretty blatantly obvious due to many different factors. One, the visuals are clearly different from the original tracks in 8. And another thing that's very noticeable is the lack of the anti-gravity sections, which are pretty much a staple gimmick of 8 original. And these are really the two biggest criticisms when it comes to the DLC, or at the very least, these are the core criticisms that all of the other criticisms of this DLC branch off from. The tracks released so far do feel a little disjointed from the normal tracks in 8, because yeah, the anti-gravity isn't there. A lot of these courses are pretty plain Jane, basically the same way that they were when they were in their original games, without any of that flair that makes Mario Kart 8 unique. They just feel a little bland by comparison. And naturally, people have called Nintendo lazy for a lack of work put into this and just porting them over from a mobile game. And yeah, I mean, I do agree it is a little half-assed of Nintendo to not do anything with these courses and make them a little different or anything, make them feel more Mario Kart 8-ish. They did just kind of port them in, and yeah, that's a little, meh, it's not that great. It does make them feel a little bit more standalone and like they don't actually belong in 8. And then of course when it comes to the visuals, you hear a lot of complaints about that one. And it's definitely not hard to tell the little details are very, very different. Things like the dirt, the grass, details on buildings and trees, all of it looks completely different because, again, they just took the assets from the mobile game and touched it up just enough to make it passable and make it look like it does fit into 8 to a degree. Now, I will say that it's a lot more blatant on the grass and the outdoorsy stuff, like the trees. When it comes to, like, levels that are indoors, that have buildings, or in the city areas, it's a lot harder to actually really notice, if I'm being completely honest. And some stages, honestly, still look pretty damn good despite this. Chaco Mountain looks really good. I think Ninja Hideaway, Sky Garden, and Shroom Ridge all look actually pretty damn good. Really, the only bad track in Wave 1, in my opinion, is Toad Circuit. That is a f snooze. Both in terms of visuals and in terms of racing. It sucks ass. And yeah, go back and play any courses from 8, look at the visuals, and then look at the visuals in this DLC and tell me that they look even a little bit similar, because they really don't. But if I'm being completely honest, at the end of the day, I don't play Mario Kart for the graphics. I could give a shit what Mario Kart looks like graphically. You're talking to a person who still regularly boots up Mario Kart 64 and Mario Kart on the SNES, and I have a great time. Okay, I could care less how they look. You know, so one stage has got grass, the other one's got a green carpet. What are you gonna do? You know, I mean, when you're driving around, you're getting hit in the ass with blue shells and getting banana peels thrown in your face and red shells shoved up your ass. You're not gonna care about what the track looks like. You're having too much fun, I, I guess. If you really don't like the visuals, bump that bitch up to 200cc. You're not gonna see anything. It's gonna be a big blur. You're gonna just have a good time, or maybe not a good time, as you're flying off the goddamn tracks constantly. There's my little quick fix for you. Actually, in all honesty, 200cc does make a lot of these maps way more fun and way more challenging. 
And that's the thing, yes. They didn't do the anti-gravity stuff, which I agree is really f***ing lame. But again, a lot of these tracks were fun in their original games, so I really don't see the lack of fun now. And the pure nostalgia maps for me, like Coconut Mall, and especially Chaco Mountain, they're just great to see in HD, if I'm being honest. Like, I don't need the anti-gravity for them, they're fine. I mean, would it have been cool to see what they could have done with both of these if given the full Mario Kart 8 treatment? Absolutely. But it's not unforgivable to me at the fact that they didn't do it. I mean, these are the first 8 tracks out of 48. We still have 40 to go. That's a lot of variety. And once these are put into the mix with all the other tracks that you already have in the game, there's going to be so much variety. There's going to be so many tracks to race on. I mean, I honestly don't really see the reason to complain about that, personally. And again, even without the anti-gravity, some of these tracks are really quality anyway. They don't even need it. Like, Ninja Hideaway, in my opinion, is one of the best tracks out of all eight and really does rival some of the best Mario Kart 8 tracks. It's that good. It's a great great course i mean there's so many alternate paths you can take and it's it's challenging i think it's great if more tracks are like this in the dlc then i cannot complain honestly i really can't even the music on ninja hideaway is phenomenal though honestly that has to be one of the strongest things about the dlc the music is fantastic highlights in my opinion paris promenade which i'm actually just realizing that i said promenade earlier in the video but i'm not even going to edit it out because fuck Coconut Mall is always good. Chaco Mountain, absolutely amazing. Again, the worst one is Toad Circuit. It's just terrible. Everything about Toad Circuit is terrible. Fuck Toad Circuit. But I'm really looking forward to the rest of these tracks. I don't regret purchasing this DLC, which that brings us to another thing. The price. 25 bucks. There are people out there who are really bitching about the price for this, just because of the fact that they're all just Mario Kart Tour ports. And that's one that I definitely can't agree with. I actually think the price for this is really good, to be honest. $48 or $25, that's not bad at all. And as someone who doesn't play Mario Kart Tour, all of these tracks are new to me, so I'm definitely not complaining. Nintendo could have gotten way more money hungry with this. They could have ended up doing, like, two cups a piece for, like, $10 or something. Now, that would have been ridiculous, and I would have agreed with it. That would have been egregious in terms of a price. A 25 for 48 really isn't bad at all, and despite its flaws, I do think that this DLC is worth it. But again, I don't play Mario Kart Tour because I don't like mobile games, so for me, it's a little bit more worth it because I haven't played any of the tour tracks, and I haven't played any of these particular tracks redone in HD or anything like that, so I think it's fine. But what do you guys think? Do you like this DLC? Do you not like it? Are you having a good time with it? Are you disappointed in the fact that you bought it? Or are you holding off? Are you waiting maybe to see what else gets released before you pull the trigger? There have been more tracks that have gotten data mined. I won't talk about them in this video because I know not everybody wants to be spoiled. So I'm not going to say anything about them. But if you want the information, it's out there. It's really easy to find. But yeah, there's a few more tracks out there that we know what's coming and I think the list is pretty great so if you're holding off maybe you want to check out that list and maybe that'll help sway your opinion but either way let me know down in the comments below what you think of this DLC if you like this video give it a like that really helps out the channel if you really like this video and you're not subscribed feel free to subscribe I make videos whenever Working full-time, social obligations and having a family is a real bitch when you make YouTube videos so sometimes life gets in the way but I'm always going to make YouTube videos. I'm never going to stop. I'm going to be doing this for a long time. So just feel comfortable in the fact that there will always be videos from me at some point. Maybe not on a set schedule, but they will happen. For those of you who have stuck with me for so long and you're still subscribed to me, I can't thank you enough. Thank you so much. You, you really do mean the world to me. I don't know how else to explain it. It's a fantastic feeling. I really do appreciate everyone who is still listening or watching my videos despite my erratic schedule. Honestly, you're the best. If you want to talk to me in between videos or you would like to meet people to play games or have fun conversations about video games or comic books or anything that you like generally, feel free to join my Discord chat. I'll have a link down in the description below. It's a great little Discord. We grow slowly over time. There's a bunch of great regulars in there. We get together to play video games every once in a while. It's fun. Please join. I would like to have a wonderful community of people to play games with and have fun conversations with, so 
I would love for you to join. But I've gone on long enough. Have a good day. Please be safe out there, and bye-bye.